China's unprecedented crackdown stunned private enterprise. One year on, it may have to cut business some slack on November 2, 2020, Jack Ma's Ant Group was gearing up for the biggest initial public offering in history. Point one day later, it all fell apart. Beijing's decision to yank the $37 billion IPO was just the start of a sweeping crackdown that has become one of the most consequential realignments of private enterprise in China's history. In the year that followed, the Chinese government's regulatory might has changed industries ranging from tech and finance to gaming, entertainment, and private education. China's regulators aren't alone in moving to restrict what they see as overly powerful companies, especially in big TCH authorities in the United States and Europe have also moved over the last year to rein in unruly players by proposing new antitrust laws or trying to regulate data and online content. But the speed and ferocity with which Chinese authorities have acted against the country's corporate titans have startled even the closest China watchers. The latest regulatory tightening cycle is unprecedented in terms of duration, intensity, scope, and velocity analysts from Goldman Sachs wrote in a recent research report. The campaign has wiped out more than $1 trillion worldwide from the market value of Chinese companies. It has sent chills through the wider economy and stoked fears about the prospects of future innovation and growth in China. Some of China's most successful entrepreneurs have quit high-profile jobs in the past several months, decisions they've claimed are unrelated to the turmoil, but which analysts find hard to separate completely. Several tech firms have pledged to hand billions of dollars worth of their own profits to government-backed social causes. And some big proponents of Chinese investment have reconsidered plans to pour more money into the market until the outcome of the political interference is clear. While China's decisions have rocked the corporate world and rattled foreign investors, she appears undeterred. To him, reigning in private enterprise is the solution to fixing long-standing concerns about consumer rights, data privacy, excess debt, and economic inequality. In other words, for the Chinese Communist Party, it's not about killing the private sector, it's about taming the excesses of capitalism and embracing the country's history of socialism. Common prosperity is the prosperity of all the people, the material, and spiritual life of the people being rich she wrote in an article published last month by a Communist Party journal, invoking a historically significant phrase that dates back to the time of Chairman Mao Zedong. It is not the prosperity of a few people. Dividing the K-China is one of the world's most unequal major economies, according to the World Bank. Its Gini coefficient, a popular measure of inequality, has increased significantly over the past four decades, coinciding with the country's staggering rate of economic growth. That meteoric rise accelerated under the leadership of Deng Xiaoping who took power in the late 1970s, after the death of Mao. Under Deng, the country embraced the free market and opened up to global trade. He famously said in 1985 that some people can get rich first to help poorer people in the long run, so that the society can gradually achieve common prosperity, a use of the phrase that differed significantly from its invocation by Mao who advocated for wealth redistribution nearly 70 years ago as he worked to cement the party's control. Worsening inequality now appears to be vexing Xi, the country's most powerful leader in decades. Just last year, his government concluded a five-year-long fight against absolute poverty. Now he's widely expected to seek a third presidential term next year and has focused his time on reducing the wealth gap. We must divide the cake well," she wrote in last month's article, adding that his goal is to achieve common prosperity of all people by the middle of this century. A desire for control analysts widely believe that Xi's concerns about inequality are real, but that the unfolding crackdown also signals the ruling Chinese Communist Party's desire for control. She is aware that a Communist Party regime only enjoys legitimacy as long as common people feel represented," said Sonia Opper, a professor at Bocconi University in Italy who studies China's economy and the private sector. The ultimate motivation is more likely to gain control over powerful parts of the economy. 
The business crackdown that dominated much of this year is believed to have started after Ma, easily the most recognizable of China's business elite, blasted China's financial system during a controversial speech in October 2020. Ma criticized China's regulatory system at the time as being outdated and risk averse an obstacle to the high-flying, innovative tech firms that he said could bring banking to poor populations and smaller businesses that are otherwise locked out of traditional finance. The tech entrepreneur also accused China's conventional, state-controlled banks of having a pawn shop mentality by lending only to borrowers who could provide collateral. He touted more innovative, data-heavy approaches as capable of bringing banking to marginalized groups. Those words likely spurred Beijing to retaliate swiftly. The Ant Group IPO was suspended just over a week later. Since then, life has only gotten more difficult for Ma, Ant Group, and China's other corporate giants. The usually flamboyant Ma has all but disappeared from public life and has even reportedly left the helm of an elite business school he founded. Ant Group was forced to overhaul its business and become a financial holding company, meaning it is much more heavily regulated than it ever was before. Ma's Alibaba, meanwhile, was hit earlier this year with a record $2.8 billion fine for behaving like a monopoly, and the company has lost roughly $400 billion in market value in the last year as it navigates a slew of new regulations from Beijing. More than Jack Mama's business empire isn't the only one affected. Maitalan, Tencent, Pintodoro, and other tech firms have also been investigated or fined over alleged anti-competitive behavior. And the ride-hailing of Didi, which went public in the United States despite reported concerns from Chinese regulators, was banned from app stores and probed over questions about data security. The Communist Party seems increasingly concerned that China's tech sector has become so globally prominent that it runs the danger of outrunning the party itself, said Ron Emitter, a professor who specializes in the history and politics of modern China at the University of Oxford. The crackdown helps to bring it down to size. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.